Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be on the um, subreddit r slash wedding shaming. This is probably one of my favorite uh, subreddits. So, let's jump right in and see what we can find. First, we have a note that has gone out to see if we're going to be attending or not. So we're going to put our name and we have little check mark boxes. First little check mark box will be attending. Second little check mark box will not be attending. Third, we'll say we are going to attend and then flake out at the last second. Uh, that seems a little bit on the nose. And the last little check mark box, instead of just responding, we will ignore this invitation until you assume we are not attending. Again, that seems a little bit on the nose, but you know, I kind of like this. I wish I'd had this. I mean, I wish I'd had this as, you know, with my wedding invitations, you know, maybe I would have actually known who was going to come and who was going to say they were going to come, but wouldn't ultimately not come. So, hey, it saves you the trouble, right? Maybe it's a good idea. All right, we have a post on Facebook, probably. Hard to say. Okay, so I found out my fiance has been going to brothels. Oof, that, that's rough. At least that's what his Google Maps location has been saying. I mean, Google Maps is pretty accurate, so. But I don't know anything about brothels. Like for his location to say he was only there for 25 minutes one time, then about 35 minutes another time. Is that legit? I would have thought you'd need more time to go in and get busy. Does anyone know if that's enough time to go in and do stuff? Holy. <laughs> he Googled a bunch of them. Then left for work early, went to the location of the brothel, then headed to work. And it's a detour from work, but he told me yesterday his GPS stuffed up. It made him detour around road works. Because I asked why he left so early for work. Haven't confronted him yet, trying to get more details because I throw my, before I throw my engagement ring in his face and call things off. Honey, I don't think you need more details. I think you just need to throw your engagement ring at him and call things off. I don't care how long he spent in a brothel. He went to a brothel. Not once, but twice. How many more red flags do you need that this man is not right for you? Girl, raise your standards. All right, we have a post, and it is titled, Tacky Wedding from Start to Finish in Two Weeks. Wow, two weeks is a very short time in which to have a wedding. My husband and I are invited to a wedding in two weeks' time, and it is the most unorganized and weirdest thing ever. We're a couple of friends and attending and had all a had all a call today to have a what the heck session as we're all equally confused so let me tell you about it this weekend is in two weeks in paris we're all from france originally but from different parts of france and all currently living and working abroad so the location selection was a first odd choice as parents is renowned to be really expensive and deaf never a first choice for provincial people like us but whatever yeah i definitely never want to get married in france i don't even know if i'd actually ever want to go to france i mean it'd be nice but like yeah i hear it's very expensive we then never received a fence a fence excuse me, official saved the date, saved the dates or invites. 
but we're just invited into a WhatsApp group to give us the details. Um, okay. We're told the wedding will be at the town hall on the sun Saturday morning at 9, and then to meet them for lunch on a boat they've rented at 1 p.m., but to find ourselves what to do with ourselves between the wedding and lunch. So between 9, I mean, the wedding probably going to take like an hour and a half. So like between let's say 11 and 1 you're to yourselves wow that's a long time then told that the lunch is actually just snacks and a few drinks but face style that we're encouraged to bring drinks if we want something other than beers and soft drinks the boat is then only rented until 8 p.m and after that everyone has to go home I mean, that's a really long time to be on a boat between 1 and 8. I mean, that's, that's a pretty long time for a wedding. This is very unheard of at a French wedding. I mean, I've never been to a French wedding, so... Uh, a wedding without a party is not really one. But whatever, we've then planned with a few others to go to a restaurant to go together afterwards as the newlyweds will spend their first married evening and night together. But it doesn't end there. We've then been told, actually only my husband was told on a separate WhatsApp group. Why does he have his own separate WhatsApp group? That we were also required on the Sunday for the actual wedding ceremony. Ah, nice. Huh? I'm confused. Why are there two different ceremonies? But for real, the plan is to have 80 people joining them at a local park in Paris with no reservation or booking or anything. Everyone has to bring their own lunches or sandwiches, towels, and drinks for a picnic. Ah, and they also want us to come well-dressed, like semi-formal, and to take pictures together. Uh, ruining my heels and dress at a picnic? No thank you. It doesn't end there. My husband, who's really good with friends with the groom, has then been asked this week, yes, two weeks away from the wedding, to be the flower boy? Uh, cringe, we're all in our mid-30s. And to also prep a speech with the other boys and to come early to the ceremony to set up. At this stage, I'm just absolutely flabbergasted. If it were a budget issue, I'd have 100% understand. However, the bride and groom are two of the most well-off people I know. They own multiple houses and never had any financial issues. Must be nice. So to me, this feels so incredibly tacky to ask people to fly over and spend a whole weekend with them in one of the most expensive cities in Europe to not feed them or even provide any sort of entertainment. I'm also really considering the gift as they're going back home right after they asked only cash gift and to not have to bother with physical gifts. So I'm honestly thinking of just giving them the bare minimum, like 50 euros from the both of us, husband and I, as traditionally the gift is supposed to pay, is supposed to buy pay for your dinner, but here there's none. My husband and his friend group have tried to talk to him and he feels that we don't get their vision and that they just want to do something unique but at what cost regretting having accepted this invitation now but we'll update to let you know how it's actually gone down once it's over and done yeah i don't know that i'd actually go to this thing like it sounds not fun not like I like a thing I'd want to be involved in, even if these people were my friends. All right, we got another post on Facebook. Beyond upset, my wedding is in three months, and no one has boughten. Y'all, boughten is not a word. It's bought anything off our registry yet. I'm expecting a hundred guests since I invited 200 people. My parents have spent over 80 grand, oh my gosh, that's so much money, 
on my wedding, and we expect to be returned with some sort of thank you. My fiancé thinks I'm being unreasonable and won't talk to me since I've mentioned this. Oh my gosh. Oh, entitled people. Oh, entitled people. <sighs> yes, it would be nice if the people that you have invited to your wedding would give you a gift. But they don't have to. It is highly suggested, but they don't have to. Oh, we got another post. M-O-H. Maid of Honor called selfish after missing bachelorette due to IVF pr procedure after years of infertility. I'm actually mortified that I am able to say that I personally am witnessing this scenario happen and play out in my real life. This makes me literally sick to my stomach, the amount of stories circulating on TikTok and other social media about this exact thing. About how members of the bridal party, maid of honor, and bridesmaids having to back out of the bachelorette for valid reasons, being sick, pregnant, etc. If I were a bride and my friend had to back out last minute due to being sick or pregnant, whatever the situation may be, I'd be upset they couldn't attend, but would never kick them out of the party or stop being their friend. I guess weddings bring out people's true colors, and I am left literally speechless. A little extra tea. The bride, I know, told me privately, it's selfish for her to get pregnant. This time is about me. And that statement alone is making me rethink our friendship. Yeah, I don't know that I'd want to be friends with a person like that. My wedding day was beautiful, but my mom died at my reception. Is it in poor taste to post your wedding day pictures if your mom died at your reception? I mean, I'm seriously asking because I would want to keep my wedding pictures, obviously, but me personally... I don't know that I could actually ever post them publicly if my mom or anybody else that I was really close to died during my wedding. Like, shh. Like, I, I just don't have mental capacity to really understand how your thought process went into this to make this post. All right, we have another post. Wedding that wasn't. In brackets. Why I didn't get married. I hope it's a good reason. I have gotten engaged. I had gotten engaged to a guy who I had been uh, in an off-again, on-again relationship with for several years. I had a seven-year-old daughter, we'll call her Anne, and was in college full-time when he proposed. He was insistent that he wanted to be a father to my little girl, and his mother asked us to bring Anne around so she could meet her nana. So I was completely blindsided when he took me out to his mother's for dinner and they sprang their plan for the wedding on me. His mother wanted us to have a commitment ceremony at her house. 
we wouldn't actually get married because she didn't want her son to be liable for my school loans or have to pay any expenses for a child that wasn't his. I pointed out that he was supposed to be her stepfather, and they assured me that he was very excited about that, just as long as he didn't have any financial obligations. Um, okay, so you want the privileges of raising a child, just not the financial obligations of raising a child. What if your new wife gets pregnant? What happens then? Are you going to financially raise that child? I'm very confused. His mom assured me that we would still be able to invite everyone and have a party and get presents. None of that would be missed. We would just skip the tiny step wherein we made the arrangement legal. I don't have a good feeling about this. I told them that if that's what they wanted to do, we could think about it, but I wouldn't be invited, inviting anyone, and no one from my family, including my parents, would attend. They were incredibly offended, and I expected his mom to entirely foot the bill and his family to be solely responsible for getting us parents presents. How dare I be so selfish! They legit didn't understand that I wasn't going to invite people to a wedding and then not get married. After going in circles over the course of the evening, we called everything off. Dodged a bullet. He got married several years ago and was one of those people who asked for cash only from all of his guests to fund the reception and the honeymoon. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you definitely dodged a bullet. All right, this is a post from Facebook. Is it rude to put on invitations that gifts of $50 or more are mandatory? My fiance and I have a lot of people in our family that love to show up empty-handed to events. They can afford to bring something, which is really distasteful to us. One of our love languages is receiving gifts, and I feel that it's befitting for them to at least come to the wedding with a gift worth $50. That's affordable. Update. No, I'm not having a wedding just to get get gifts. It's all about love at the end of the day. But if plates cost a hundred and fifty. $50 on top of enjoying an open bar and an individual brings nothing just because they feel like it, I feel that's a slap in the face to my union and the relationship between me and them. We chose to have the $150 play and open bar because we can afford such. How about we forget the $50 price chat tag? How about they bring something? Yes, someone might not be able to afford $50, but why is coming empty-handed widely acceptable? If everyone came to your nice birthday party with no gift at all, like no one bought anything but was enjoying everything you had to offer, how would y'all feel? Let's talk about it. <sighs> People feeling like they are entitled to everything <laughs> all right uh okay so this is twitter okay i'm not on twitter my sister got married yesterday and the groom started his vows with kate you're a bully and proceeded to give like 50 examples of how she bullied him in the last 10 years and then he said but you're my bully, and I love you for it. And I started bawling. Love is real. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And I thought that that dude with the vows that were like, basically, I love when we have, I love when we make love, basically. And that's pretty much all that he talked about during his vows was bad. This is up there. Another post. Today, I effed up by accidentally proposing to my girlfriend at her friend's wedding. 
I don't know how you accidentally proposed, but let's find out, shall we? My girlfriend and I attended her close friend's wedding this weekend. It was a beautiful outdoor wedding at a vineyard, and emotions were running high. During the reception, the DJ invited all the couples onto the dance floor for a special dance. My girlfriend loves romantic gestures like this, so she eagerly pulled me onto the floor with the other couples. We were swaying back and forth to Ed Sheeran's Thinking Out Loud when I caught a glimpse of the beautiful sunset over the hills and felt a surge of love for my girlfriend. Caught up in the moment, I reached into my pocket and pulled out the diamond ring I'd bought to propose to her in a few months from now. Dude, why did you have it in your pocket? Why did you have it in her po in your pocket? Why was it there? At during this wedding. <laughs> Before I realized what I was doing, I'd gotten down on one knee in front of her and about 50 of our closest friends and family. Her hands flew up to her face and tears started rolling down her cheeks. Trying to save the situation, I held up the ring and loudly proclaimed, I didn't mean to do this now, but I can't wait. Will you marry me? There were audible gasps from the crowd. My girlfriend started nodding vigorously and crying even harder. I slid the ring under her finger. The crowd erupted into applause, and we sealed the proposal with a kiss. After the shock had worn off, we both started laughing at how I had turned a quiet sunset proposal in a few months into an impromptu public proposal at her friend's wedding. We spent the rest of the night celebrating our engagement with our loved ones. I definitely messed up the proposal I'd planned, but we now have an amazing and unforgettable story to share for years to come. Why don't you talk about what your friends thought? What did your friends, who that was their wedding, think about you proposing at their wedding? TLDR, I accidentally proposed to my girlfriend in public at her friend's wedding in the spur of the moment, and she said yes. Yeah, you didn't say how your friends, whose wedding it was, thought about you proposing, because I guarantee you they were upset. Guarantee. <sighs> So that was some shameful weddings or wedding posts. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you like this video, please like this video. And if you want some more content like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. <sighs> and I hope you have a good rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.